We're approaching the halfway mark of the Shannons Nationals for season 2018. This latest event, though, sees a stay in Victoria, but again at another legendary track, this time on the edge of the ocean. The stunning backdrop, of course, is that rugged surf coastline, and it's fencing in the iconic track, one of the world's great tracks, Phillip Island. Hi, everybody. Greg Russ with you. Welcome to our coverage of round three of the series. What a day. Weather forecast looks pretty good, too. My late mate, Barry Sheen, often referred to this place as the gateway to hypothermia. It might be early winter, but it is absolutely glorious here right now. You've only got to look at the stats and the history pages to know that the name Peter Hackett is one of the most successful in the history of Australian GT racing. In fact, he's one half of the winning combo from last year's endurance championship, but he wears two hats. He does some fantastic experiential things for Mercedes clients. And coming up in about an hour's time, some of these lucky clients are going to get to experience Phillip Island, aren't they? Yeah, we've got uh, 200 AMG guests, our VIPs up in our corporate suite upstairs, supporting all of the AMG GT3 teams and the AMG Driving Academy, which is a national program that gets to teach people how to attack places like Phillip Island. We've brought some cars down. I've got uh, 10 instructors here and all of the 200 guests are going to go for a, a hot lap around the track in our E63 and C63 road cars. Super stuff. How do you then park all the racing stuff you need to focus on for the weekend and concentrate on that because you guys do it very well. Uh, for me, it's not that difficult. I've got a great support team. I've got really good instructors and uh, Mercedes-Benz is really good at handing me the keys to their program. And I know that when I have to pull a visor down in the race car, that that's my job and, and uh, we just need to win another championship. So for me, it's uh, whatever hat I happen to be wearing and I'll just switch personalities. Thanks very much, gents, and we are poised for 101 glory here this afternoon. It's a BMW and a Porsche on the front row with two very keen Audis behind. It's the third row before we see anything other than a German mark, and it's a McLaren. And then we go to two more Germans, an Audi and a Mercedes there as well. Matt Koch, who travels all around with the GT Series, has joined me in commentary. Matt, 101, again, we do it uh, right throughout this afternoon. I guess uh, a big highlight of the year for the GT guys. Yeah, good afternoon, Daz. Good afternoon, everyone. This is one of the biggest races of the year for the Australian GT Championship. Round two of the Australian Endurance Championship as well. It's a double header this race, 101 laps. Perfect weather here today down at Phillip Island. Let's run through the grid then after the two-part qualifying yesterday. Liam Talbot and John Martin ended up on pole in the 911 Porsche GT3 RS and Steve Richards and Michael Armand off of second. Then Jeff Emery and a little bloke named Garth Tander in third place in the number one Audi R8 LMS. Alongside them, another Audi, Tony Bates and Daniel Gaunt in the KFC Audi. Gee, I tell you what, we look uh, just a bit further back down through the field there to pick up something other than a German mark. And uh, we've got to go all the way to Jackson Evans and Fraser Ross there as well. So they'll be uh, picking up out of sixth place. Peter Hackett in the number 63. He's had a busy day. He's had 200 of his best customers from the AMG business down here enjoying their time. We hope they continue to enjoy themselves in the, uh, the hospitality suite. Luke Gordon and Yasser Shahin in the 777 there as well. And there we have the first of the Lamborghinis. Adrian Dietz and Cameron McConville back in ninth place. Then it's Walls. And this car is uh, making its way out as well out of 12th. And then Scotty Taylor is, sorry, out of 11th and 12th is Walls. So we are all set to go. Well done to uh, Johnny Martin in the 911. The Hot Wheels Porsche for getting the crew set. Michael Armand has seen the message as well. And we have got a magnificent two-line field just easing on the throttle now as they come down to the strike line. It's almost walking pace, isn't it, Matt, as they come down. And we are away, and the Porsche goes well. Have a look at the KFC car. It drives nicely out of there with Tony Bates. What a ripping start for the Audi. Drove straight around him, but the BMW has been gazumped there a little bit. Pushed back to P4 as he heads into turn one. Peter Hackett in the 63. He's pushing up pretty hard as well. But have a look at Fraser Ross in the McLaren. Right up in behind the BMW. What a start from John Martin there. Getting the, uh, the pace nice and slow, using the traction in that Porsche to leap clear of the hood. Maybe will start all so from uh, Michael, we've got contact further back. That is the number six Lamborghini Huracan and the borrowed Tony Quinn McLaren. Cam, uh, Cam Bannadungan mentioned you don't say it's a borrowed car when uh, when you're about to go racing and it picked up damage at turn two already. They're a little bit further back. Hopefully they will rejoin some damage to the back end. It looks as though that the McLaren is the moving. McLaren is, uh, sorry, the Lambo and the McLaren yeah. are moving. Yeah, so that McLaren is 
limping, looks front left, out front though. John Martin has uh, leapt clear. Fabulous start from that Porsche 911, the Hot Wheels Car Care product. In a different postcode at the moment. We're only half a lap into this 101 lap race. He leads from Jeff Emery and uh, Tony Bates, the two Audis, second and third. Michael Armand's dropped back to fourth off the start. He's dropped a couple of places. It's then Fraser Ross, Luke Gilden's just picked up a spot ahead of Peter Hackett. Max Twig now up there into eighth. Ash Samadhi in ninth. Rounding out the top ten is Tony Walls. See if we can pick out what's happening with the two cars that were involved in that tangle at the start. Well, the Lamborghini's underway. It's yeah. up uh, around the back of the Haitian, but Tony Quinn is just bringing the game over car into pit lane. Ironically, the game over car coming back down into turn four. As John Martin has eased 3.75 second lead on that first lap. And when I say eased, because he did it with just such a relaxed approach to this opening lap. And that is a fantastic start in any form of racing, let alone when you've got 101 laps to go around here. It just sets your mind for a winning pattern. Michael Arman suffering a little bit off the line there. He's managed to keep the McLaren behind him as we just get bits of uh, debris and carbon fibre, which will be that rear splitter off the back of Adrian Dietz's Lamborghini. As he comes down, passes now, and there's a uh, tyre rubbing on that uh, left rear wheel. So that's just ever so slight. They're going to have to come in and rectify that. that uh, certainly not be ideal. The right-hand side does cop all the punishment here, but you can't go for too long with carbon fibre rubbing on your Pirellis. Now we know how hard this place is on tyres. John Martin, he's got two fresh sets of Pirelli P0s up his sleeve out front. We look a little bit further back at the number 10 Audi R8 LMS. The International Motorsport run entry, Andrew Fawcett and Johnny Reid will share that car. It's come across from New Zealand where they've been doing lots and lots of running. It's a brand new car actually. That one of uh, Andrew Fawcett's previously been running in Ferraris. So we see this battle pack now for second. Jeff Emery heads Tony Bates, Michael Armand, Fraser Ross, Luke Yulden, Peter Hackett's in this one as well. Let's go down to Greg Rust in pit lane. Madam at Wall Racing with Cameron McConville. What's the, the word from Adrian so far? Uh, he just said he got turned. So it looks like Scott Taylor was behind him and the tyres are cold, you know, at the start of the race. Adrian was probably being a little bit conservative and it looks like he just tapped him on the way through. But then he got collected by one of the McLarens, so tripped the rear bar off. We think it's actually okay, but uh, we're just going to have one look at it. But I mean, it's the first lap of a 101 lap race, seriously, but anyway, that happens. Now, Grant, when we heard the news about the car, I did not want to have this conversation, but one good thing, at least it wasn't you at the wheel. Yeah, not as much as I didn't want to have it with you. Yeah, not ideal, but these things happen when you've got congestion on a racetrack on cold tyres, and Tony, unfortunately, couldn't avoid a car that had spun in front of him, and they made uh, the car roll back into Tony, and it sort of just punctured through the sidewall of the tyre and broken the rim, so it was a pretty slow old trip back, but we had three hours to try and make amends and keep ourselves in it, you never really know. Michael Armandau right up the back of Tony Bates. But Tony Bates, interestingly enough, looking right in front of him, his old teammate from Tag Motorsport, Tony and Jeff, for many years they went racing in Commodore Cup and, uh, and in uh, the development series as well. So uh, now both teaming up in Audis, uh, being part of the Audi Sport Customer Racing Program and of course Jeff with the number one emblazoned on the side of his car being the reigning champion. So Michael Armand is uh, really starting to give Tony Bates the hurry up message here. Fraser Ross is latching onto the back of the BMW as well. So it's a three-way scrap for number four. Tony Quinn rejoins the race. The team's happy with the McLaren down there with any luck. Hopefully there's not too much damage. Probably likely to be steering, you would think, will be a little bit perhaps right hand down if it's taken a tweak. Not what you want to do uh, going into not 101 laps. No, you're certainly going to get more tyre wear around a track that's already so hard on tyres. And that's something that we're going to speak about as this race unfolds. I've got four sets of Pirelli P0 tyres for the race. Some drivers have used three, others have used two, others have used all four. So some teams will have fresher rubber than others out front. We know for a fact that John Martin saved two brand new sets of tyres and he's using those to full effect at the moment. 10.4 seconds already up the road. He's pulling out at more than two and a half seconds a lap. There's the uh, Luke Yulden slide at turn one. That's a nasty spot to go around. Thank goodness he went to the infield, if you like, there, collecting the Morris Finance signs. So brand new this weekend, the Morris Finance signs. <laughs> one already uh, consigned. We've had two pace signs consigned to the uh, the graveyard. There's Quinny there, just getting out of the way of the leaders of the field coming through. So the McLaren clearly not right at this point in time. And uh, he's just uh, making sure he can bring it back safely. So the crew will have the McLaren arriving back on their uh, doorstep, I would suggest. Yeah, Tony Quinn, also a, uh, an experienced racer, knows full well that 
he's not in the fight uh, that these guys are among, so get it right out of the way. He does come into pit lane as well as we look at the 911 Hot Wheels car care products just racing clear at the front of, uh, of this race. 15.8 seconds now, seven laps in the books. This is an extraordinary stint from John Martin. I can understand why they've started the former A1 GP racer. He's lights ahead of everyone else. Jeff Emery in, uh, in second place. He's about a second up the road from uh, the Tony train. As, um, as one hack has messaged me and suggested we, we've had the Bates bus, but the Tony train seems to be the crowd favourite. <laughs> we might put that all to one side at the moment as we just watch Jeff Emery, who has now got the BMW behind him. Michael Armand has taken the challenge, and it looks like Fraser Ross will too. Tony Bates has opened up the door to anyone that wants to get through, and they're taking up on that challenge. Michael Armand obviously got that through quite nicely, but now Fraser Ross is being enticed with a nice open gap into the corner. Where can the McLaren get through? Will it be under brakes down into MG? Certainly got the speed through here as we continue back with the Morris Finance leaderboard. John Martin, 15.8 seconds over. Jeff Emery in the Audi. Michael Armand in the BMW. Tony Bates in the Audi there. Some 17 seconds from the leader. Fraser Ross to Peter Hackett. Now this is the battle pack. Ross, Hackett, Twig, Johnny Reed well off the back of that group but certainly this is where the battle is right now this is for uh, positions four and five on the road and tony bates has been in the thick of it for the first six laps of this race there's the back of two mercs two amgs thundering down the straight as they do those uh, 6.3 litre v8s charging underneath the melbourne australia bridge they're never going to sneak up on you are they no they're They'll not never they're, sneak not, up on they're you. not stealth that's for sure <laughs> That is for sure. And this magnificent BMW, absolute engineering masterpiece, that car. And uh, as much as it's been a masterpiece, it's also been the engineering conundrum too for a number of years for the uh, SRM crew. Yeah. They've That's certainly got it switched on now. It's just a matter of keeping it switched on. Yeah, they've solved that Rubik's Cube, haven't they? As they see the, uh, the leaders start to work their way through some of the GT4 track. You see in the, the top corner of the screen, so this was covered off in the pre-show as well, the, uh, the coloured numbers that will tell you where the cars are on class when they're out on track. The, uh, the cyan or the light blue number is the championship class. The yellow is GT4 class. That car there is currently running in fifth place. It's uh, got Mark Griffith and Rio Nagara at the wheel of that one. The 55 currently has Rio Nagara two-time winning here yesterday in the Australian GT Trophy Series as we watch Michael Armour now up the inside of Emery. He's got the job done now. Emery's run wide. Is that going to open the door for Bates? No. Track turns back left. It gives Emery the high ground. So a round to complete what will be their 10th lap. Gee, that BMW is poised, isn't it? Here it is, Michael Armour. He's bided his time to get through on the KFC car. He now goes through on the Valvoline Jemek Pem car of Jeff Emery. The number one on the side, championship winner from last year. Tony Bates now tucked up underneath behind his stable mate. Fraser Ross has now found a way through on Tony Bates. A little bit of side-to-side -side contact. Bates will now hold the inside line as they tip it into Siberia. Just holds the apex, doesn't allow Fraser Ross up the inside. The McLaren still stuck in there in fifth place. I tell you what, Fraser Ross wants to send it through on Tony Bates now because <laughs> he's going to get gobbled up by a couple of Mercs that have now got their tyres right up to uh, operating temperature. Front engine GT cars versus mid-mounted engines of the McLaren and the Audis. Front engine in the BMW, or if you had a good look at the BMW, it's almost a mid-engine mid car yeah, as well. Very much, isn't it? Got yeah. that engine placed. The fact that the muffler, the first muffler is mounted up on the firewall <laughs> and it comes yeah. back to the firewall as well. Yeah. So, John Martin well clear of this battle for second place. Even though Michael alman has got through, he hasn't escaped up the road too far. There is the, uh, the Strom and Jorgensen BMW M4 GT4, the Mark GT car. They're just putting a lap on as they flash down the front straight here for the 11th time. It's out front. Absolutely serene. He's in his own little world at the moment, isn't he, John Martin? He's just found a heap of grip that no one else is getting anywhere near. He's 22 seconds, only 23 seconds a lap. Let's, let's uh, just so, note yeah. that on, on lap 10, it was 22.7 yeah. seconds. Let's see if Michael Armand now can match those times. Having said that, he's able to put the car where he wants. There's no challenges. He's just easing the car around, albeit pushing it very hard on that good set of Pirellas. Fraser Ross has got to run out of Siberia. He's going to have to go the long way around. It's a brave <laughs> move. He said, this is a brave bit of track. He's, oh, 
Oh, and Jeez, that's close now. Look at Hackett buying into this. Around the outside across Lukey Heights. If you can hang it around out there, and we've seen it done. You've then got the inside line down into MG. Hackett stays the course, holds that inside line. Fraser Ross has to see that spot. That's, that's not what Fraser yeah. Ross wanted either. Attack immediately became defense there as he got mugged for fifth spot. And that's typically when you're racing in these big chains of cars, if you put your car in the wrong spot, it gives the, uh, the guy behind an opportunity. Peter Hackett didn't need a second invitation. Here is a replay of the move. So Fraser Ross tried to go the long way around at Hayshed. That slowed him up as he had to back out the road, beginning to uh, escape away from him. And uh, that's allowed Peter Hackett just dive around the outside. Good, brave move. Good, good driving from both of them, because that could have been a, uh, a nasty one, should they, have, uh, should they have touched. John Martin is now in pit lane, so he's taken that early opportunity. 36.8 seconds was the lead. Wow. 36 strong, seconds strong start. in 16 laps. Let's, let's call it two and a bit seconds a lap. My maths isn't, isn't so he's strong. stopped yeah. in the lane, and the second car is only just passing the pit entry road. Yeah, phenomenal performance from John Martin. He's going to hand that car over to Liam Tavel. We saw him getting ready out on track, though. We are watching Jeff Emery versus Peter Hackett versus Fraser Ross. We've been enjoying this one for a couple of laps now. Fantastic battle down in, uh, down in second or third place, rather. So we go down to Cam Van Duggan in the lane. I'm just going to give you some information that John Martin told us earlier in the coverage for those that are joining us later in the day. Yesterday, he did his qualifying time in only one run. He only required one set of tyres. He set his time on lap three. So John Martin said they had plenty of green rubber up their sleeve for today's race. So just waiting for Max Twig to pit here in car eight. And they, they, what the, the team are telling me here is they wanted to get him out of the traffic. So Tony Delberto is here. He's not jumping in the car. Uh, but they've done this, boys, just to sort of get him some clear air. We'll be back trackside in just a few moments. is currently our effective race leader yet to take his first dose of medicine heading up from Jeff Emery. Just dropped back into the clutches of Emery in the last couple of laps, so he's lost the second or so advantage he's had. Emery has the attentions of Fraser Ross, that Audi and McLaren locked together for a little while now. It does make a bit of sense to just pull your car if you're tucked up behind someone else, to pull your car into the pit, serve that first compulsory pit stop. You have to take it at some point. You may as well pull your car out, see if you can pick up some clear track on uh, on the exit. Just in the uh, GT4 battle, watch, watching uh, Trent Harrison currently heads that one. Good job he uh, started a little bit further down the grid, having uh, picked up a mistake. Let's go down to Greg Rust in pit lane. Just keeping an eye on uh, Pirelli's manager, Asia Pacific for motorsport, Simon Poole, a guy who's been around the game for a long time, both circuit racing and rally. He's had a good look at the tyres, guys, on these, uh, these early stoppers. He says no problems at all at the moment from what he's witnessing, and we know how brutal Phillip Island can be when it comes to rubber. Thanks that, Greg. Interesting, we're watching the, uh, the Peter Hackett pit stop. Was his front right wheel inside the, uh, the white line on the concrete part of the apron? That's where the cars need to stop. It'll be interesting to see if, uh, if that's OK. I know the clock, of course, is pretty hot on that sort of stuff. BMW is in the lane, and as you've uh, just heard from Greg Rust, no one has actually gone for a new set of P0s yet. They're all hanging on the uh, the inbound set, so they've done a fuel stop mostly, um, and there was a couple of driver changes there. Of course, Liam Talbot jumped into the Porsche after John Martin had uh, just driven 17 sprint lap races in the first part of this race, as Jeff Emery is now pit bound. Greg Rust will be following all the stories in the lane. Uh, Matt, just on your question in relation to whether Peter Hackett had stopped within the prescribed area in the pit lane, the initial comments I'm being told by some of the GC officials here in the lane is that they don't believe there is an issue right now with it. Thanks, Thanks Greg. Nice to know. Thanks, Greg Rust down there, keeping his finger on the pulse, as he's been doing for many, many years across the Australian motorsport landscape. So stops starting to happen about half the field. Let's go down to Cam with more. Yeah, fuel stops for both Emery and Bates in the Audi Customer Sport Racing team. I can also take a little no note of interest is Adam DeBore, car controller on car 24. I'm at the game over pit with both Grant Denyer and Tony Quinn. The shot you can see at the moment, look how brutal the hit has been for the McLaren. And sadly, Tony, you've withdrawn from this race. 
Yeah, it was just um, not right. The, the the car's just lurching and stuff at high speed, and I I just not brave enough. I'm sorry. What's your take on what happened at the, the very beginning and how um, you feel about that? No, no it feels irrelevant. No, um, Dietz on cold tyres just. His back came round, spun. Scotty Taylor avoided it, and he then he came back onto the track. And uh, Dan Gordon. Look at the car. number 11 that Jeff Emery uh, <laughs> left there. An old Commodore Cup racer from a long time ago. If you're going to leave pit lane, leave some number 11s down that uh, concrete apron. The last car in the lane there. In fact, so did Tony Bates. They both peeled out in there. Audi Sport customer racing cars from the KFC Shed and the Valvoline Jamek Pem teams. It's a pretty dark putting it over. He's done a good job down there. He has. And I'd give him 11 out of 10 for that one. Yeah, that'll uh, get the resin off the outside <laughs> of the tyre, won't it? The release agent is no more. Jeff Emery back out on track, currently in 11th place. It's still yet to shake out. There's only about half the field to serve their first compulsory pit stop. So our race leader for the moment is Fraser Ross. He'll be thankful for the clean air, you would think. Spent much of the first part of this race tucked up behind someone else. The Total Optico McLaren is the effective race leader. We're looking at the number one Valvoline Audi R8 LMS, Jeff Emery and Garth Tander. Garth Tander also still in the uh, the garage down there in the Audi Sport Customer Racing pit. So Getting he'll through jump on later on. Yeah. Glenn Wood in the crossbow there as well. KTM crossbow running in the GT4 trim. Of course, it's Trent Harrison just leading the way in that class at the moment. In fact, just dropping back too as they, uh, Max Twig and Jeff Emery go through. We go back down to the lane. We saw Luke Gilden getting out of the car before. Reigning Bathurst 1000 champion Luke Gilden. Uh, track conditions look pretty good out there. Yeah, it's OK. It's a, I had a big moment at one, didn't I? So, uh, again, just, just miscalculated the aero wash. It was, it was so bad behind other cars. So I don't know if every other car is affected the same way as our car, but our car drops two or three seconds a lap behind another car. So. Yeah, it's not, not the best start, but anyway, we'll soldiering on, see how Yasser goes in this one. They started well with a great qualifying performance in the Hot Wheels Porsche, but uh, John Martin, that was a great first stint as well. You guys are in good shape so far. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was sort of a surprise to see where we were really after qualifying yesterday, because generally the car's a lot better race car than quality car, so we knew come today we'd be half a ride, but to have that sort of uh, advantage after even in the first couple laps, I was quite surprised, but, um, you know, it's a good feeling, and then at least then I could just, like, you know, run our own race and uh, try to manage a few things. Obviously, the, the tyre deck here is quite high, so I still had to manage that, even though it's quite a short stint but um so yeah it'll be interesting at the end of the race what it's going to be like it's out front well not out front the car that was out front currently sitting in third on track although the effective race leader is liam talbot the first of the cars on track to have made his stop in the hot wheels car care products porsche sensational stint in the first part of this race came a convo and uh, Adrian Dietz in the lane in the Lamborghini as well. So it's all starting to kick off here in terms of the uh, pit stops after 25 laps. This will be a frantic stop there for Adrian Dietz. That crew will have been wanting to get their hands on that car for 23 laps now to check out what damage was occurred. It did obviously have a rubbing tyre. We saw that with smoke coming across is that some of the undulations in the main straight here at the Grand Prix circuit started to touch there so they'll be well aware of that they've got the opportunity now to rectify those concerns and to send Cam McConville out vastly experienced race driver and uh, McLaren just peeling out of pit lane that'll be Warren Luff I would suggest at the wheel now that but uh, Walls Tony Walls has been at the wheel uh, they didn't do uh, a driver change now I watched no. that one closely so stu should still be Tony Walls at the uh, the wheel of the number 11 as we watch Jeff Emery, who's dropped a couple of spots in the pit stop sequence. How's this though? Liam Talbot, after uh, one compulsory pit stop, holds a 17.8 second advantage over Duvish and Padiachi. So that was the stint that, uh, that John Martin did in the first part of this race. They now hold a 17.3 second advantage after the first round of stop. That is absolutely phenomenal. So you can see the, the, uh, the rebar there of the Lamborghini on the exit of the Southern Loop. Tony Walls still in that car. We've had that confirmed from the lane as well. So Walls in the 12th place. Number 11 objective racing at McLaren. You can see that from the little LED display in the corner. Let's go down to Cam in the lane. Well, I've got the co-driver of the driver you're just talking about with Tony Walls. Warren Luff, you're not even in your gear yet, looking nice and relaxed. Yeah, look, I'm about to go get changed now. Tony's doing a great job out there. Probably about lap 47, 48, I'll be getting in the car. So, um, yeah, I'll go get ready shortly. 
These conditions are changing a little bit at the moment. A bit of cloud cover and it feels like ambience dropped. Is that going to change the car much? Oh, look, it actually probably helps us with the McLaren being turbocharged. But, um, look, I don't think there's any bad weather coming. Although I wouldn't mind a bit of rain. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's fine. And Matt, interesting, you're just sort of pointing to some strategies that would play out, getting uh, getting maximum driver laps out of the way and plugging in the the, uh, the Johnny Hot Shoe, as you refer to, the bring it to the end. <laughs> yeah, not bad, Warren Luff, as a, as a Johnny Hot Shoe, is he? As we watch a, uh, a replay, this is the 24 of uh, Tony Bates. Just looking to put a move on the 13 of... Oh, that's a little bit closer to the light. Darren Jorgensen at the wheel of the Mark GT number 13 BMW M4. Perhaps didn't expect the, uh, the Audi to dive up the inside there. Was looking left when Tony Bates went white. They zigged instead of zagged. May have had his eye on this BMW. Uh, yep. He's charging again. Michael Armand still at the wheel of the number 100. It's had a uh, had a poor start. Went back to fourth and uh, did eventually make his way back up into the lead of the race before the pit stop. And Albeit then, as uh, John Martin was in the pits. And this sequence has hurt them as well. They've dropped down from running in P2 when the uh, the sequence started. Now in in ninth place. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do in uh, the next couple of stops. Two more stops for every car out there. There's a couple out there that still get to, to serve a stop. Take a peek inside the Audi Sport Customer Racing Australia garage with uh, Mission Control down there. Garth Tander watching GT, watching some GT, about to get into a GT. That's stop, the I'll last stop, time. I'll, I'll, I'll no stop with that. Get away that's with that I've, I've, done that, I've done the GT Maybe joke in the three last times. hour. Yeah. <laughs> you can use that one more time. Let's go down to Greg. Matt, as you know, this is a good little story, the Hargraves car and, uh, and the Mark team that, uh, that run it. He came to a, a drive day at, uh, at Norwell on the Gold Coast, drove the car, loved it, and the kind of the career and the tenure with his team commenced from there, and he's got some big plans to do events like, you know, the 12-hour, etc. That's That's all part of his, uh, his mission. He's enjoying this racing. Right in on the back of Max Twig. Mercedes versus BMW, the Mercedes, the Mercedes doesn't even bother defending down into Turn 1. Lyman sails through, takes the inside line, moves up into 6th place, the number 100 BMW, the laser plumbing and electrical. Steve Richards will jump in that car a little bit later on. Tony Delberto into the green, yellow and uh, white WM waste management. In fact, Entry. Michael Armand over the last uh, lap was the only one down into the 130s. Now, already easing out to the high 131s even into the 132. So Michael Armin maintaining the rage with the 130 on that last lap around. Hence why he just drove down the inside. The HSY auto parts car. It's Ash Samadhi. Ash Samadhi the there. HSY new auto parts conglomerate in the Australian automotive landscape. Has he got a, has he got a puncture? The right rear on that just looked a little bit soft. And there is the uh, number 58 car. That's Shane Van Gisbergen and Dershin Padiachi sharing that one currently running second on track. That bit off the road. So we've got something happening down at Audi. There's action happening at McLaren as well. I wonder if those two have perhaps come together. Audi in pit lane, the 58 in pit lane. We've also got one of the uh, the BMWs coming in as well, with the GT4. So that was Lots Ash, of action happening here. Ash Samadhi in the number three, who we saw off, and Dush Padiachi in the McLaren we saw off there. And he's trying to uh, negotiate the pits. Looks like he's uh, driven past his pit bunker, but uh, the Audi of Ash Samadhi just slowly coming down. He looks like he's trying to feel if there's some damage for that car after that off he had, which we just saw. Yes, just servicing the car at Audi Sport Customer Racing. I wonder if they'll put fuel in that then, put it up on dollies. They've got the dolly wheels there. They're going to wheel this car back into the uh, the garage to have a look at what's going on here. Let's, uh, let's go to Cam with more. Yeah, I've been watching this one, guys. I can tell you, could not turn the car left. They think it's a tow link in it, so they're about to do some work on the three at the moment. But Dylan O'Keefe doesn't even know this is going on. He's gone for a quick pit stop just as this all unfolded. I'm just at the McLaren guys with uh, Devotion Padiachi and, uh, and Shane Van Gisberg. And now Andy McElroy, very experienced, as you guys know, uh, with Carrera Cup cars and GT cars, team boss. He tells me they believe it's a broken steering wheel. I actually did, did a double take when he told me that. I said, you mean broken steering? He said, no, broken steering wheel. Yeah, not something you uh, regularly carry as a spare part, I guess, but uh, SVG's now heading out with a new spare part. So uh, there we go. Down there, a broken steering wheel. Wow. Well, not what you want to have happen heading into turn one here at Phillip Island, I can tell you that. Steering wheel coming off in your hand is not ideal. And there goes the McLaren. Now let's see what happens as that McLaren rejoins Dush and Padiachi has been in the lane. 
what, what I'd like to find out is whether that counts as a compulsory pit stop or not. Perhaps uh, Greg or Cam can can check with one of the GT officials down there in the lane to, to confirm or deny that one. Because if it is, it's not such a bad thing. They've lost a bit of time, but they're still in the hunt here as we see the battle. Jeff Emery out losing on track. two yeah. spots there. Ran wide down into turn four. Down to Greg Rust. Just to complete the story, guys, I, I just double-checked it with Andy McElroy because I couldn't believe the, the... I mean, he would tell the truth. He wouldn't lie to me, but he said, we've gone down and actually borrowed Tony Quinn's steering wheel. So it's a, definitely a broken steering wheel. Uh, trust me, that sort of stuff makes me nervous. Yeah, you and me both, Greg, that's not what you want to hear. There's no... Uh, this is one of the tracks, I guess, like Mount Panorama, that you don't want to be left wanting for being able to turn the corner. It's uh, very difficult, but of course, these days, the steering wheel is such an integral part. All of the ABS settings, all of the traction control, the gear shifting mechanism is all run via that steering wheel. Let's yeah. hope that the, the McLaren, the game over McLaren, and the McLaren of Duvian, Duvian, Patty, Ooh. actually, yeah, there was contact there. That was yeah. Ash Samadi. So Samadi was uh, in the process now, of being passed. Now in the shed getting work done. Yeah. And I wonder if that was where Divish and Padiachi said, well, I can't steer out of this anymore. Yeah. I wonder where the issue concerned. So that is, you know, the, the steering wheel is such a technical part of the, uh, the GT car in the modern era. Cam in the lane. Very quickly, Dylan O'Keefe, mate. So quick yesterday. It's frustrating when things like this happen, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's very frustrating. Uh, quite disappointing. The car was quick. We had a short pit stop time, but uh, the first pit stop went wrong with Ash overshooting, so we lost 17 seconds there. And then uh, I haven't seen the replay, but yeah, there was contact with the McLaren. So um, yeah, quite disappointing, but uh, a little bit frustrating too. This is the Liam Talbot's in pit lane on lap 43, the minimum driving lap by my maths, 46. He should be out there for another three laps before he comes in and can hand that car over. Well, even though uh, uh, no, he didn't start that car, yeah, did he? Yeah, so right. this is the, uh, the second stop. He jumped in on uh, or a 9.11, he dropped in on lap 16. So this is the car's second compulsory pit stop. It means he'll now run uh, and hand that car over. If you can fill for us, Daz, I'll do some quick maths. The, the, the rule is 46 <laughs> so the minimum laps for the driver there. They've done fuel. Now, yep. they're, now they're putting yep. a uh, right rear tyre on it as well. Yep. So that'd be, that'd be almost compulsory too after doing so many laps. We'd probably start to see a bit of wear on the, uh, the rear tyres on a Porsche. And we're going to do, uh, we're doing a full set, is it? Right, yep. right hand side and the uh, left hand rear at the moment. So I would suggest that the magic number for that 911 Hot Wheels Car Care Products Porsche is going to be lap 62. So I think we'll see Liam Tower in that car for another 19 or 20 laps. Oh, that's a big crash for the Janetta. The number 55 Janetta in the wall. That's over the top of Lukey Heights. Rio Nagara in the, in the car. Heavy damage to the back end of that. You can see one of the wheels in the background there. There's a couple of other tires rolling around because there's a tire wall there. This is, wow. This is race changing. There's also fire now in the back of that car. Rio Nagara will look to jump out of that very, very quickly indeed. We've got a safety car as well. Yep, safety car is out. This is going to change the complexion of the race. And the door open now, Rio Nagaro opening the door of his own. Wow, that, 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 it's a strange spot yeah. to be going off. So Rio Nagaro, a man who won two trophy series races here yesterday in the Janetta for the first time. He's lost it at Lukey Heights, then backed it in to the tyre barrier. Of course, it's, it's earth banking behind that, so it's thrown the car north. Wow, look at the air under that. This is going to be quite a stop. They're going to have to uh, rebuild that tyre wall. It's going to be an elongated uh, safety yeah. car phase down there at the moment. That's and, uh, talking about firewall. Yeah, they're going to have to get the fire move crews there quickly or well, that car's going to be raised, isn't it? Let's go down to Greg. As you can appreciate, there were some very nervous looking people here at the Geneta team. Mark, I was a bit you were glad to see that they got out of the car OK. Yeah, always. When those things happen, you just want to make sure the driver's out and he's all right. And he did radio in, just said, uh, oops, I've had a big one and then so, got out of the car. So we only sort of caught the bit on TV like everyone did and a car sailed sideways across the screen. So we're unsure whether there's something on the track that he hit or something let go. Uh, but as long as he's all right. Mark Riffith there, and we hope we're talking about a good news story next time. Hard luck. Yeah, thank you. There he is. All right, we need a quick break here on our coverage of the Shannon's Nationals from Phillip Island. A big crash under safety car here in the 101. wave goodbye hopefully for the last time to the Melbourne BMW safety car here at the Shannons Nationals and the field now comes under control of Fraser Ross he's done this before 
and Peter Hackett really the one that has got the, the hair trigger, if you like. He can't go too early because he cannot even overlap one millimetre on that KTM in front of him. And Fraser Ross will know that. He's uh, actually being quite generous on this restart here, bringing the field down to the line there. And uh, it's under his control. He can go when he wants to. Well, he knows he's got the acceleration over the KTM. He goes, and that there means, he yeah, he's got the jump over the, uh, the rest of the field. I'd have gone a bit earlier than that. He's uh, still probably got a good 50 metres over Peter Hackett, who has made his way now through on Tesorio. The GT4 race leader drops back in the uh, engulfed by these GT3 machines. KTM Crossbow, who is the race leader in that class, is a 777 of uh, Yasser Shahin picking up that car from uh, Luke Gordon. What we're expecting to see at, uh, at the end of this lap is a spate of pit stops. Those drivers who've not yet done a driver change and have driver B starting the race, I expect to see them in pretty much straight away. They've now done their minimum driver laps, where lap 50, maximum driver laps lap 55, as we see the uh, number 10 Audi. That is forcing Johnny Reed in that car, losing a spot. We know they're coming in. We've yeah. just heard that yeah. uh, during the walk on the uh, the halftime entertainment there. But uh, they're certainly going to be pit bound along with about 50% of the field. Yeah, my uh, lap chart is about to go out the window as this frantic pit lane activity begins. Fraser Ross opening a bit of an advantage out front, 1.8 seconds over Michael Armadou, just about rears on the uh, the BMW. Have a look where, uh, where Liam Talbot's climbed up to. He's now running third on track. He is effectively a lap down. Ross so in, I've got Ross Hackett in, Hackett in, in with front in. three, all dive for the pit lane. This race is about to be turned on its head once again. A lap after a resume following a brief hiatus mid-race. It's going to get very, very busy in pit lane. Narrow pit lane here as well at Phillip Island. We've seen this before. Congestion is going to be an issue. Perhaps some drivers will even just leave it a lap, come in the, the following lap, so that they get away from some of that, uh, some of that melee. So leaderboard now showing Jeff Emery to Tony Walls in the lead of this race. They come around across the line there as well. So Scotty Taylor Motorsport car continues on around. There's the New Zealanders. Now here is pit lane. It is action aplenty. There's uh, the changes. AFS yeah. KFC car. Lots of driver changes are going to happen here. Pretty much every car that's stopped is going to be performing a driver change. So Adrian Dietz is in the lane. He's been in the car since the start. So too Max Swig. He climbs out in favour of Tony D'Alberto. Tony Bates will climb out in favour of Dan Gaunt. Uh, further up the lane, Fraser Ross. See his car from where we are to see if there's a driver change in that one. Max the, Twig uh, wanted out, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He was he saying his deck was done, yep. Jake Farakar at the wheel now of the number 63. Jackson Evans will jump in the 59 McLaren. Get out there, Daniel Gaunt. Journeyman of uh, Australian, let's say, uh, Australasian Anzac Motorsport. Jumping behind the wheel. Always an ever-reliable set of hands. Of course, Porsche Carrera Cup regular for a few years ago. And there we see the KTM crossbow. Oh, oh that's a big loss. One. It's a big spin. High speed. It's going to hit the wall. Oh, that's big a impact. big one. Number 48. Big in impact. That's the Tesorio. Managed to stay out of all of the oh. trouble in the restart on clear track. Unfortunately, the 48 putting the car out over oh. on Another GT4 car into it, which is Medecki. Is there some debris that's down Jeremy, on the track? That's Jeremy Gray, who's just been in pit lane. What's happening down there at turn one? Two GT4 cars off heavily. Safety car. Now this is, and the reason Garth Tanner just struck, this is absolute the disaster. Wow. Here we go. Here we Let's go. watch this KTM All by himself. Tesorio on his own. Went out Round wide. To turn one. Just bobbled a little bit on exit there. He's run wide. Passing at this point. Yep. And from this point on, you take your hands off the, uh, the wheel, your feet off the pedals and you brace yourself for impact. Can't get a bit of air there as it left the track. And then the Medecki car with Michael Gray at the wheel. Uh, Jeremy, oh, sorry, Gray, Jeremy Gray, yeah. Gray at the wheel. So they were one and two in GT4 class. We're now down to just two GT4 runners, Darren Jorgensen and David Crandon. Now let's go to Greg Russ down the lane first. Matt, I just wanted into uh, the Aston Martin racing team. Andrew Medicke, one of the most experienced guys in, uh, in Australian motor racing. That would have been a hard sequence of replays to watch, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, pretty, uh, I don't know what would have caused it. Obviously, the, the, the uh, crossbow 
had a lose on its own and then Jeremy's collected him whether Jeremy was topped off the circuit. He was on pretty cold tyres, so I don't know. As we're back underway and green and racing. Yep, you can't pass before the control line. Hence, we've got a bit of a bottleneck further back behind the KTM of David Crampton. No one could pass that KTM in their GT3 car. The GT4 car just about 450 horsepower versus 650 of the GT3 spec machines. The BMW also being mugged as they go into turn one. Tony Walls at the end of this lap, I would expect to see him in pit lane. He has now done 57 laps, only allowed to do 55 at most. So they're going to pick up a penalty, you would think. So race order at this point, as things stand, is going to be washed out. There's the compulsory pit stops owing to us. Tony Walt from Garth Tander. See Daniel Gaunt putting a move in there on Steve Richards. That's actually a battle for sixth and seventh place in this race. So Gaunt has moved up a spot there. The sun now just beginning to drop. Getting the eyes of these guys is going to change and get lower and lower. Eventually it'll drop behind the hills here and, and visibility will improve. But for the moment, it's going to be blaring in the guy's eyes as they round towards the hay shed up over Lukey Heights, where they'll see practically nothing. Across Lukey Heights, it's going to be a little bit of climb dance, a little bit of hand up in front of the uh, in front of the sun across the top of the uh, the peaks. Bit of Ari Vatanen. Yeah. Bit of Ari Vatanen. Yeah. Hand up, sun out of the eyes, 1,000 horsepower turbocharger <laughs> underneath the right foot. It's all getting a little bit close down there at MG, isn't it? The field of GT3 cars. Looks as though Steve Richards has lost another spot to Fraser Ross, so the BMW is being mugged. In fact, there's a heap of cars now coming into pit lane. This is what we expected to see. They've all got to serve compulsory pit stops, so this is going to release a bunch of the field that has served a second compulsory pit stop. We expect to see the 911 Porsche emerge or rise to the top of the pile here. So Tony Walls is in, Jackson Evans is in, Steve Richards is in, Cam McConville is in, Garth Tander is in. Up and down pit lane, lots of cars coming into the pit lane. Let's go down to Greg. In fact, Matt, I'm actually at the back in the paddock area where the Griffith Hogs team have been very kind to let us go on the, the tail lift, the hydraulic tail lift for their transporter. You can see beyond us here the damage to the Janetta, which has been the other, the massive headline story from today's round of Australian GT. Very fortunately, Rio Nagara is with us and you are okay, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah, mate, it was pretty big. It was a big shunt. Um, just coming over Lukey and uh, as normal in fourth and just all of a sudden the car just, just moved and I was just a passenger. As we see the Porsche in the lane and getting a new set of wheels and tyres on there as well. So John Martin will be released. He was epic in the first yeah. part of this race. 36 seconds over 18 laps. Let's see what he can do now. Yeah, he was really in a class of one in the first 20 odd laps of this race. That car first came in on lap 16 for, uh, for Liam Talbot to jump in. He's now jumping out, having completed his minimum laps. John Martin being strapped into that car. Some fresh Pirelli P0 tyres being bolted on. That's their third compulsory pit stop. They're done. Whatever happens from this point on, they're to the flag at this point. They are the only car in the motor race at this point to be in that position. There's cars out there that still owe us two compulsory pit stops. They are sitting absolutely perfectly at this point. We see the number eight Tony Delberto car also in pit lane now. So Liam Talbot will be out and he will be, I dare say, talking to Greg Rust in the not too distant future. They're now serving that time there. There's a bit of chat just going on radio checks and there goes the uh, twig car yeah. as well with Tony Delberto that, that's down the lane. That's their third compulsory so stop as done. well. So they're looking good. They're just on the way in. They're a little bit further up the lane. So they're looking good. The 58 is back in as well. That should be their third compulsory stop as well. We'd expect to still see Daniel Gaunt, who's currently showing in the race lead, and Jake Foraker back in in the Merc. So uh, the AMG should be back in. So they're still thereabouts or in contention as the Porsche is leaving the lane now. Steve Richards has just gone the quickest of anyone. Fastest lap of the race that time through. Let's go down to Cameron Van Dungen, who is in very busy pit lane. Just got Liam Talbot getting himself ready. Got to get the hat on, mate. Got to get the sponsor in there. The last official stop done. Johnny Martin in the car, and it couldn't have gone better to this point. Yeah, it's hard to know in the car. You just go into a number. Your engineer's telling you good job and everything. So at the moment, it looks looks okay. Two red flags. That's a bit unusual, but uh, yeah, as long as the drivers involved are okay, that's our main thought. 
great to see Liam playing uh, tribute to the team. Matt, you and I saw that team with a manual yeah. going about it, yeah. an aero update and doing some very fine adjustments at Sandown. He's right in, in, in thanking the team. The guys have got to do the hands and feet. They've got to do the dance at the wheel, don't they? But the team behind them are the ones that are telling them to come in now. They plan to have Johnny they're Martin off. They've got damage to the back end of that Porsche. Sorry to cut you off there, Daz. John Martin's just out of the lane. He's missing the rear bumper. He's going off at turn one. There's damage to the right front of that car by the look of it. The front splitter also looks amiss. The car that looked bang on for... Uh, the, have a look at the oh, dust and stuff coming out, out of the front. Yeah. Of now too. That's... What's going on to John Martin? The car that looked... Yep, Bang, that's, uh, that's a hose. That. There's a hose leaking on the road there. So he's yeah, and he's pulling off. Lane. He's pulling up. That, this is absolute disaster, both not in terms of this race, but in championships as well. There's 300 points on offer. Let's have a look at the stuff on the road. Yeah. That's depressing. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, still that's... debris from the GT4 crash. Well, well that, that was all cleaned up, of course. Yeah. So that looks like it's from the Porsche. So the Endurance Championship for this car now all went over. The, the Australia GT Championship now is going to take a massive hit. Wow, the highs and lows, what the racing gods giveth, they taketh away, almost in a heartbeat. Oh, that's a shame. Wow. That's absolutely Absolute drama. Time for 10 laps or so. This race will change complexion again. It's done it so many times. We're so slow to the uh, to the green flag once again. Jake Foraker this time, though, does put the hammer down, leads the field down towards turn one, over the little crest, down the hill into that right hander. They sweep across the road. Four acre from Gaunt. Steve Richards is in there looking at the back of the second placed Audi. So the leading car, a lap clear of the field. That will be adjusted, we understand, when he makes a pit stop a little bit further back. You see Garth Tander putting a move on the sole remaining KTM crossbow of Trent Harrison. So lots of debris littered around the exit uh, and entry of turn two there. The Lamborghini parts on the exit, Porsche parts and KTM and uh, Aston Martin parts on the entry. And Jake Foraker now has to drive the laps of his life to try and keep this car in contention. Dan Court, Stephen Richards behind him. Tony Delberto, Johnny Reed, massive effort for the driver and crew of team of car number 10, Jackson Evans now, also in the 59, Luke Yulden in the 777. They, we know that car's not awesome. Luke's told us that on a number yeah. of occasions, as has Yasser, that the car's not doing exactly what they want it to do. It's doing the best they can with the equipment that they've got after a bit of a shunt yesterday when Yasser was at the wheel. And it's Craig Baird, Warren Luff, Garth Tanner, Cam McConville, Shane Van Gisbergen. So we see Jake Foraker and the Peter Hackett car in the lane. So they've also got a, uh, a drive-through penalty that we heard Ben Eggleston mention now. Just to see whether they serve it as a drive-through or if it's time added on to this pit stop earlier. We have seen time added on to pit stops for start infringements. Yeah, it will certainly drop this car uh, out of contention because here comes the uh, Daniel Gaunt car and that puts him into the lead, the KFC car that he's sharing with... Tony Bates, Stephen Richards in hot pursuit, two seconds behind. Tony Delberto, a second and a half behind there. Johnny Reed, Jackson Evans, they all roll through now. Craig Baird, Luke Yildon, Garth Tander, Cam McConville, Warren Luff, all rolling through. We'll, uh, we'll make sense of that afterwards. What about Craig Baird here? Yeah. <laughs> He's getting a little bit feisty out there. A little, a little, bit, a little bit of uh, Craig Lowndes uh, Morse <laughs> code on the back of that McLaren as we go down the pit lane with Cam. John Martin back in the garage, mate. Heartbreak when we saw that Porsche pulled to the side of the track. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, yeah, just like, uh, so we pitted and done the outlap. The outlap was pretty good. Got down in a turn one and then uh, right just like on the exit of the corner, just like washed wide a little bit. Like, it's a bit weird really. So we're just looking to see if Anderson failed because it was like, you know, quite weird. But um, yeah, sort of washed wide and then half on the kerb, half not on the kerb. And it's, you know, torn the splitter off and done a fair bit of damage, obviously. So we busted the radio. And I had to stop. Coming around now, we'll get uh, another lap at uh, 16.49 and another lap. So we'll get another two laps, yep. I would suggest, in this race. Dan Gaunt doesn't look as though he's going to come under too much pressure, but I tell you what, Garth Tander is applying pressure to Jackson oh, Evans. Big and he's slide there from Jackson Evans. He's done well to hang on to that. He's going to lose a spot, you would think, to Garth Tander, who's going right well, around the outside. He's, he's going to go hot shoulder to They're shoulder. They're going to continue him. going side by side through Stoner Curve. That will then give 
Garth Tander, you would think the inside line when they get down to, to Honda. Can Garth Tander brave it around the outside? Absolutely he can. We know how good he is on the brakes. Garth Tander capitalizes. It took him three corners, but he punished Jackson Evans for that slide at turn one. We first saw Jackson Evans racing in the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge a number of seasons ago. Now he won that year, and uh, now he's just been given a little bit of a lesson by one of Australia's finest race car drivers. Doesn't matter what he jumps in. Garth Tander, he's doing a good job. Teaming up with Jeff Emery, and I'd say Jeff's pretty pleased with what Garth does, otherwise he wouldn't keep having him back like this. He fits in well down there at the Audi Sport customer racing team, does Garth Tander. Out front, Dan Gorn, three and a half seconds clear of the field. Just then Steve Richards, and the number eight Mercedes AMG GT3 of Tony D'Alberto, Johnny Reed currently in fourth place, although he's now in this final lap under the attentions of Garth Tander, who's really putting in a charge towards the back half of this race. By my maths, as we finish this, Tony D'Alberto and Max Twig will maintain the championship lead. Remains to be seen, though. Just what happens behind him, Garth Tander and Johnny Reed glued together. There's a bit of a traffic jam forming behind the BMW M4 GT4 of Brett Strom who's currently leading that competition from Trent Harrison. So, Gaunt from Richards, D'Alberto just half a lap from home. So the car that next crests Lukey Heights, for those watching locally, is our race leader. The chequered flag, there is nothing on track between him and the chequered flag from now as one of the marked cars goes across the line. The chequered flag has been unfurled and is being displayed for Daniel Gaunt. This young man, it's been a while since he's greeted the chequered flag. He's driven everything and he drives the wheels off it. A really good steerer is Dan Gorn, an honest racer. His pieces deals together, gets a drive, and with Tony Bates, out he strikes here at Phillip Island and takes what was going to be a 101. We'll work out the exact amount of kilometres of what it was, but it was 78 laps in the bag. And what a great run there. Stephen Richards continues the great form of BMW and Tony Delberto brings the, home the first of the Mercedes in the field. The best result of the BMW's two and a half year career. Fabulous drive from Dan Gorn and Tony Bates. The number 24 KFC backed Audi four and a bit seconds ahead of Steve Richards in the BMW and Tony Delberto who with Max uh, Twig continue to lead the Australian Endurance Championship. So Johnny Reed in fourth, Garth Tander in fifth, Jackson Evans in sixth, Craig Baird in seventh, Cameron Conville, Luke Yulden and Warren Luff round out the top ten. Tony Bates, uh, what a race to win. Oh, fantastic, mate. Uh, you know, the sprint races are great, but, uh, you know, to win this with a, with a great uh, team like MPC, great boys on my car, my old mate uh, beside me is just uh, stellar, so yeah, yeah, enduro wins are unbelievable. Complete weekend really, you know, we work pretty hard at it all, all weekend and um, we've come away, come away with a good result. It's good to have Mikey back and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going right in the championship now too, so it's, it's fantastic. We've been going at it for this our third year and um, we're starting to see a bit of the fruits of our, our hard work, so uh, you've got you to do a good job in the pits, you've got to do a good job with the strategy and we've both got to drive it pretty well. So. Very weird race, and uh, you know we just kept trucking along. The team didn't make any mistakes. Um, we certainly didn't have the pace today, uh, but I'm really stoked to get points, get another podium, keep our championship alive. A huge thanks to all of our volunteers and everyone from the Confederation of Australian Motorsport on behalf of all of our great partners, uh, in particular to Shannon's Insurance. That takes things out at Phillip Island. We'll catch you at the next round. Bye for now.